And let me do my screen share. Okay, so I've got my screen share going, where you should be able to see my uh, my window that's got, once again, like I introduced yesterday, we have uh, our file menu up here in Snap, which is like the little paper icon that your students can use to open and save files. Uh, you have the cloud icon, which is used to log in and log out. If a student has been working on a lab and they're actually discover that they're not logged in, they actually can go back and, and log in and it will not erase their work. So I encourage students to always check that they are, are logged in. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go to my cloud. I'm going to log in with the account. If you made the account yesterday, again, username and password. Very straightforward. Uh, and what I wanted to do with this session is I wanted to introduce like some more of our programming, um, just some of the different features that you have here in Snap that some people had experience with Java, some had experience with Python. So some of you may already know the basics of coding or the principles behind programming. I want to kind of show you where you can find all that stuff in, in Snap. Um, and in doing that, I'm going to kind of go through a very basic program with you. This is mostly for those that are, have no experience with Snap and you really want a, a pretty quick overview. Again, this is being recorded. Okay, doke. So uh, what I want to do is like, let's just start a brand new file. I'm going to go to the file icon. Again, you can either just watch me or you can follow along on your own screen. Although it might be a little difficult to sort of toggle between seeing my screen and then seeing your own screen. So it's kind of up to you. But let me go ahead and go to File, New. Uh, it didn't do anything. It, didn't, it just still says Untitled, because we want to actually give it a title. We want to go back to the File menu and then Save As. Save As, so we can go ahead and give it a name. And I'm just going to give this a name. I'm going to call it uh, Demonstration. A reminder, you want to save everything to the cloud. Don't ever save it to your computer. Hit save. And now we're in a new lab. We're in a new file called demo. You can select different costumes for your for your sprite. So right here, select it on sprite. I can go here to costumes and sort of do like a little paint program where I can actually import an image by dragging and dropping it here if I want to. But if you want to use one of the predefined uh, character costumes, you can go to the file menu. And I can go all the way down. The second last one is called costumes. And under costumes, I'm just going to grab, uh, I'm going to show you the kind of the different costumes that they have available. And I'll just kind of grab uh, a random one here. Mm. Let me just grab this bear right here, this little polar bear. Hit import. Then I'll hit cancel to get out of the costumes menu. Uh, so you can see the sprite then gets replaced by this little bear icon. If you do things like we did yesterday with the move commands, the turn commands, or the go to random point, it will do that right here with your with your polar bear. Okay, that's not the main goal of this. The main goal is to introduce you to some of the main concepts behind programming, and that is the concepts of input and output, uh, a conditional statement, or what's called an if statement, um, a simple loop, and hopefully, if I get a chance, showing you how to create your own custom block. So let me start off by doing this. I'm going to go to Control, and I'm going to go ahead and drag this coding block. It says when green flag clicked. It's pretty much like how we start most of our, if not all of our programs. And like I introduced yesterday, or if it's the first time you're seeing it, we're going to click here in the corner where it says looks. Not too worried about costumes or anything, but I want a command that is a basic output command. If you've ever done programming before, you know output is just basically communicating words or saying words to the user of your program. So I'm going to grab this block that says say hello for two seconds. And instead of saying hello, just so I can show something different here, uh, let's say something that we like to repeat a few times, right? Like let's do a phrase like hip hip hooray. 
Okay, so I've edited the, the text in my dialog box to say hip hip hooray. And you know, we normally say that, we normally do it, we say it three times, right? Like think about hip hip hooray, hip hip hooray. So here's something that your students are gonna learn pretty pretty quickly. There's something called a repeat block. Let me go back up here to control, which has what are called my control structures. I can find all my loops uh, about halfway through the screen. You have a forever loop. There's one that just says the word repeat. Now I'm gonna grab that, move it over here. And basically, and this is a good introduction to what's called iteration or loops. I'm gonna use this, I'm gonna change it from a 10 to a three. All right, and I kind of have it detached so that I can go ahead and drag in this say command. And as you can see, it's sort of inside, it's sort of wrapped inside that repeat block. So if I attach all these three things, what's gonna happen if I click on the green flag, it says hip hip hooray for two seconds, then it repeats it. As you might guess, it's gonna repeat that three times for us. You can attach more than one code segment in inside of this loop and it's going to do everything exactly three times. Right, and this is one of your first forms of loops that you're going to introduce to the students. Okay, let's get some user input. And to do that, I'm going to use a block called ask. I'm going to click on sensing, kind of a lighter blue corner. And see the block here that says ask what's your name and weight? Let me grab one of those. And not just that block, but let me also grab this other little, um, it looks like a, an ellipse or a, an oval and it says answer. Let me grab that and I actually wanna put it off to the side. Now this is something else that you can talk to your students about. You can have code, you can have like blocks all over the place in this, what do we call the scripting area. As long as they're not attached to anything else, they're not gonna be triggered, they're not gonna do anything. Now what's answer? Whatever is typed in by the user after they get a prompt uh, for this ask, whatever they type in is gonna be stored into what's called a variable. I'll teach you how to make your own variable as well. Um, and it's, it's stored in this variable called answer so that we can kind of, so that the program can remember that. It's a, it's a named location in memory. All right, instead of saying, what's your name? Let's actually ask a, a real question. Let's ask, how many years have you been coding? Once again, I'm editing the text in my ask to say, how many years have you been coding or programming? You can use your own language if you want. You can put like 15 exclamation points, whatever you write. It's going to appear on the screen. Now, whatever's typed in as an answer, I guess, is going to be stored into this variable here called answer. I want to actually do something else. I want to create a new variable. And once again, variables are just ways of storing information, whether it's a name, whether it's a number. Um, if you could, again, watch carefully how we do this. I want to go to my little tab here that says variables. The very top thing is gonna say, make a variable. You have to do this. And again, it's, it's a drag and drop style language. So declaring a variable, for those of you that have experience programming, uh, you have to do this process in order to make a new variable. Okay, so I'll say make a variable and I'm gonna call it, uh, okay, let's call it number of years. Now, there's a couple things that I want to point out. Your students can actually put spaces in the names of their variables. I always encourage them not to, because when they get into other programming languages like Java, which is the next course, Python, C++, they're not going to be allowed to have spaces in their variable names. But one of the things that we use in computer science is this thing called camel case. If you can see my screen, we basically shove a bunch of words into one, but every time we have a new word, we, we capitalize that letter. So I've got number capital O of capital Y years with 
no spaces. I try to to drill that into them so that they know that when they use other programming languages, they usually can't use spaces. All right, it's going to say for all sprites, that's the default. We're just going to hit OK. So what happened? Now I see number of years on my actual programming screen, right? And it's tracking, it kind of defaults it to be a value of zero. So how do we change that? We use a command called set. I'm still in variables. I go down here to set, drag it underneath ask. And what I really want to do is set my variable I just made called number of years and set it to whatever the answer just was. So if you can see my screen, there's like a little drop down right here. And you can select your variable. You can also select under the word my, you can say different things uh, relating to the sprite, like their, their X location, their Y location. We're not going to worry about that too, too much right now. But I can select number of years, right? Because I made that as a variable. And then I can just drag in this little uh, block that says answer. I can put it over directly over where it has zero to kind of cover it up. Now, what can we do with that? Well, before we move on, let's just make sure it's actually working. So we can go, what we can do is every time, and please encourage your students to do this as well. Every time you make a change to your code, rerun your program again by clicking on the green flag to see exactly what changes you've made. So let me click my green flag and, and watch the corner of my screen to see what's what's happening in my program. I click it. He says hip hip hooray. He does it exactly three times. OK, and then it kind of gives a pause. It says, how many years have you been coding? I, I have a an input window now where I can type and I can put uh, the actual answer to this for me, which is about about 22 years. Yeah, I started programming when I was 15 and I'm 37. So 22 years, I could hit enter, I could hit check. And what happened is now that number 22 gets stored into this variable that I made called number of years. And that's it. Like that's that's the only thing we've asked our program to do so far. And you can kind of see on screen like it's it's displaying the value of the variable number of years.